Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this is a video for behave, uh, excuse me, for Psychology 1100 Lifespan Development. This is Chapter 4 of our uh, text. It's Early Childhood, and we're looking at the second section, which is about cognitive development in early childhood. Uh, the first thing we want to talk about is a little bit about uh, the work by Jean Piaget, one of the uh, most significant people in the cognitive development of children. Um, he talks about things like, for instance, symbolic play, which is what we see right here. Now, Piaget's pre-operational stages, now, and the operations have to do with the ability to deal with abstract concepts. The pre-operational stage lasts from about two to seven, and this is when young children's logic is under construction, and pre-operational thought is characterized by the use of symbols to represent objects. That's what we have here sort of in our pretend play, that symbolic play, and the relationships among them, with the most important symbolic activity being language. And preschoolers' drawings are symbols of objects, peoples, and events in their lives. And symbolism is also expressed as symbolic or pretend play, which requires a certain level of cognitive sophistication based on the use and recollection of symbols. Uh, Pre-operational children also have uh, numerous mental limitations that reflect, uh, that reflect cognitive immaturity. This is something that Piaget talked about. Uh, these limitations can include things like egocentrism, uh, problems with causality, this causes that, uh, confusion of mental and physical events, and something called centration, the lack of conservation, like conservation of mass or volume, and the irreversibility and difficulty with class inclusion. So let me give you uh, one example. Um, so for instance, egocentrism, which in this case does not mean vain or self-centered, but it means really the inability to take literally take the viewpoint of uh, another person. Um, to do this, Piaget had something he would call the three mountains test. And a child would sit at one end of a table and there would be three model mountains on it. And in this arrangement, one of the mountains would, for instance, be to the left of the others. And what Piaget would do is he would ask the child uh, if a doll who was sitting, for instance, on the side or the other end of the table would also see that same mountain as being on the right side. Now, it, they wouldn't. They would probably see it on the left side if they were on the other side. Um, but children below us, a certain age simply would say that other people saw what they saw, and they would be surprised if they didn't. Um, and this was really the development, I mean, and so that's egocentrism, really the ability to see the perspective of others. So eventually when a kid understands that, for instance, their mom or dad don't already know what happened to them at school, that's uh, a milestone in this development. Uh, now, there's a lot of things that can affect cognitive development. One thing here we want to mention is what's called the HOME environment. Now, HOME here is an acronym, and it stands uh, for the HOME Observation for the Measurement of the Environment. It's actually a way of gathering information about the place where people uh, live. Now, let me just talk about something very quickly first. It, it's something called cognitive scaffolding. This is temporary support provided by a parent or a teacher to the learning of children. And parents should approach children through what's called the zone of proximal development. And this is the range of activities that a child is able to do, not on their own, but they are able to do it when somebody is with them, assisting them. Uh, they still do it, but with this uh, social structure. Um, and that's a way that children can develop new cognitive skills and they can function working with more skilled people. Now, back to the home assessment. The a uh, home observation for the measurement of the environment is this rather elaborate thing. It, it, people come into the house, they uh, check all sorts of things like uh, parental, emotional, and verbal responsiveness. They look at avoidance of restrictions and punishment. They look at the organization of the physical environment. They look at the provision of appropriate play materials, parental involvement, opportunities for a variety in daily stimulation. So all sorts of things. Um, What's interesting about it is scores on this home inventory are actually better predictors of a young child's later IQ than things like, well, infant IQ, which would be hard to assess anyhow, or the mother's IQ, or, even, or the family social class. In fact, the scores from the home, uh, home inventory for a child are actually associated with that same child's occupational success as an adult. Um, also, a couple notes about early childhood education. I'll just mention that research suggests that preschool education enables children to get an early start on achievement in school. So studies of programs like Head Start and other intervention programs show that environmental enrichment 
can enhance the cognitive development of economically disadvantaged children. And something also about television. American children spend more time watching television than they do in school. And so television has a great potential for teaching a variety of cognitive skills, social behaviors, and attitudes. Particularly when you look at things like we talked about before, the uh, social theories of learning. That's what's Vygotsky. We talk about social cognitive learning by looking what happens with other people. That's Albert Bandura's work. And so television has the potential to play a role in these particular things. Now, uh, let's take a quick look at what's called the theory of mind. This is a child's beliefs about what the mind is, how it works, and um, here's an, one interesting study. It's done by uh, researchers Moses and Flave uh, Flavel, and three-year-olds were shown a video um, in which a clown comes into a room um, well, we have this little girl, Kathy. She puts her crayons into a bag. She, uh, she leaves it on the table. Uh, this clown in the video walks into the room, picks up the bag, puts the crayons in the drawer, puts rocks in the bags, and puts the, uh, puts the bag back on the table. So, anyhow, the little girl left a bag full of crayons, but now it's a bag full of rocks. Uh, and the, she got changed in the girl's absence. And then when asked if they thought Kathy would expect to find rocks or crayons in the bag, now... Kathy left it with crayons, so that's what she should expect. Most three-year-olds gave the incorrect answer, demonstrating their own difficulty in understanding that the other person's beliefs would be different from their own. So that's a form of egocentrism. Um, also, the appearance and reality distinction, that's the difference between real events and mental events, fantasies, misleading appearances. And Piaget believed that children don't differentiate a reality from appearances or mental events uh, until maybe the ages of seven or eight. Next, a little bit about memory. So, most people don't remember remember stuff from their very young childhood. In fact, uh, there's something called infantile amnesia. You don't remember your, your infancy at all. Um, and not many people remember things from when they were very young. However, there are exceptions to this. Now, you have autobiographical memory, and it's facilitated when children talk about events with others. And by the age of four, most children can remember events that occurred, for instance, a year, year and a half earlier. Uh, on the other hand, major events, like for this kid, uh, Hurricane Katrina, um, because it's such a, an, a huge, traumatic, and socially embedded experience, they're more likely to remember it uh, uh, much longer in their lives. Um, also, we got a little bit here about development of memory. So, Certain things can help children develop memory. These include, for instance, what the child is asked to remember. They find it easy to remember events that follow a fixed and logical order. Also, how interested the child is. They show better recognition and recall for the toys, uh, which really pique their interest. Um, the, whether the retrieval cues or reminders are available. So if, they're, if they depend more on cues provided by others, then they'll, they'll do better. Um, and what measure of memory is used. So verbal reports where the person has to say what they remember may not be indicative of how much they remember as opposed to, for instance, a performance or physical measurement where they can show you something. Um, also, children can be taught strategies such as rehearsal and organization to help improve their memories just like adults can. Um, the last thing in this particular section is about language development. So this one, this uh, chart shows ages from two and a half to four and the kinds of developments that occur. So, for instance, uh, very early on, we have a rapid increase in vocabulary. There's no babbling. At three, you have a vocabulary of about a thousand words. They can use yes, no questions. They can embed sentences and use negatives, which are cognitively rather sophisticated. Uh, by four, the, the vocabulary is, again, much larger, speech is fluent, and they can coordinate sentences. And then you have some example sentences here on the side. So children's language skills show extensive development during the preschool years. Their vocabulary increases rapidly with, the new, with new additions every day. And through something called fast mapping, the child quickly attaches a new word to its appropriate concept. And so you have something that's called the grammar explosion of the third year. And uh, this results in the expanding of the child's sentence structure to include words missing in what's called telegraphic speech. As we see up at the top, two cups, it broke. That's telegraphic. Um, after this grammar explosion, children begin adding articles, conjunctions, possessive adjectives, pronouns, prepositions to their everyday speech. So by this age, their speech is nearly 100% intelligible, reaching total fluency by the fourth year. So their articulation improves, their vocabulary expands, and they begin using new, more, more complex sentences. 
It's also around this stage that children start to develop abstract thinking like scripts. Uh, this is where a person a uh, child describes an abstract concept, but they describe it more in terms of the sequence of activities, the specific behaviors, the order that they occur, uh, the sequence, as opposed to just the um, inherent characteristics of the concepts themselves. And that's it for this section.